Um, yeah, thanks so much, Alan, for inviting me. V, thanks so much for having me. It's really an honor and a blessing to to preach the word. I haven't done so in a few years. I was part of other other ministries, um, preaching the word and doing um, worship. Um, I'm also just doing worship now, but um, it's just an honor and a blessing to to give the word this morning. Um, so yeah, please uh, also stop me if you want to if if you didn't hear what I said. Um, I'm going to try to speak loud. Just as uh, Lou Allen was talking, um, I just sensed that to say, or to uh, just in this in my heart, that we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. And uh, when, I, when, I, when we worship this morning, I, I, I just try in my mind to focus on the Holy Spirit and His guidance because it's so important in our lives. I think it's something that um, I I, I don't think we can speak enough about is the, is the presence and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's not my message this morning, but the Holy Spirit is definitely incorporated deeply in there. Um, so yeah, my, my title this morning is The Gospel. Um, I, have, I have a lot of points here, so I'm, uh, I'm going to get right into it. I only have half an hour. I have a two-hour sermon prepared here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really have. Um, I thought about uh, maybe telling a joke before that we before we start and stuff. And I know uh, when we were in Living Word, Vanner also always uh, taught a joke like um, a mother-in-law joke. But I'm not going to do a mother-in-law joke this morning. Um, but I, it's, I told my wife the other day. Um, it's so funny when you're younger. So we have a lot of flies around the house. And I, when I was younger, I never thought I would have so much joy in buying a fly trap and seeing flies go into that fly trap. Um, it's, it's just funny how we change from, from being young to old. So yeah, that's uh, just leave it there. Um, but yeah, I, I want to say what I want to say to this morning, I want to say in, in love, uh, and I'm going to speak the truth to you. And uh, it's something that God has made part of my life from a young age. Um, I believe God has really called me to evangelize. And I, I, I believe that's for everyone to, to, to go and speak the gospel and to go and share the gospel. It doesn't look the same for everyone. Some people go, uh, works in a, a secular job. Some people as a pastor. Some people... Uh, goes out into uh, to outreaches, um, but everyone um, is made and created to share the gospel. Um, so I, w- I want to um, just go to the Word of God, uh, Matthew 28. Um, it says here, and Jesus came and said, I don't know if you have your Bibles with you, I'm just going to give you a few seconds. Sorry, I, I didn't send the Islander verses before, but I think he would have just gone because I have a lot of scripture in here this morning, uh, but I'll read it for you as well. I, th- I think it's, because you're a Bible church as well, it's also nice just to hear the word and, and it will open up uh, the gospel to you as well. Um, so this is just the commandment of the gospel and it says, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Such a powerful uh, commandment and uh, uh, I can I say it? it's uh, it's just sets you at peace that God is always with you, but it also at the same time gives you that uh, that hunger and that push to say, I have a purpose and a meaning to go out and proclaim the gospel, baptizing and teaching them, um, and all that God has commanded us. So I just want to read the, the other part. So this is just in another gospel, Mark 16. Verse 15 to 20, uh, it's just a different, it's said in a different way. But it says, um, and he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. And whoever believes 
uh, and is baptized, baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany these, those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak in new tongues, and they will pick up serpents with their hands, and they drink any deadly poison, and it will not hurt them. And if they drink, and if they don't go and drink poison, or pick up serpents, um, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So, the, so then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. And while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the accompanying signs. Um, yeah, the, the, the last part of this, the Lord worked in them and um, confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Um, and it's so relevant to me in my life because um, I've I've lived it uh, in this uh, in this for quite a few years now. Uh, that, that the signs follow uh, when you when you do the, when you preach the gospel. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Um, I want to share two testimonies with you as well. Um, that's very dear to me um, of people. I don't want to give away too much, uh, but it's, it's just, I just want to get you hungry, uh, for the gospel, uh, this morning. Um, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a person who don't talk a lot. Uh, my wife tries to talk a lot to me. She talks a lot, much more than me, but I don't talk a lot. Uh, yeah, sometimes even when, when I reply, I just say three words or four words. So she's really battling, but she is praying for me. Um, so, to me, it's a real challenge to go out and speak to people. Um, it's, uh, I, I actually want to uh, give this example. So, yesterday, um, I went to, uh, to go and get these cables for the guitars there in Centurion. And um, I, I had to stop at Brooklyn just to go and buy something. And uh, I walked into the shop and walked out and there was a there's like a, this restaurant and this guy was standing there it's one of the waiters and when i walked past him my heart just did this just like a bolt of oh what's this you know and i saw the guy and i'm like this guy looks pale he looks like death basically <laughs> sorry it's a very very graphic image but he's yeah he was just pale um and so, uh, because I, I'm like, I'm going to preach about talk, uh, the gospel tomorrow morning, and but I, Lord, I can't talk to this guy right now. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I went into the, uh, I went back, put my ticket in, drove all the way, and I was just like, no, God, when you give a word, then I will go and speak to this guy, and. Um, something there is a, a light needs to shine on him or something you know it, it can't be I don't have to and uh, it's it's as if the, the Holy Spirit didn't really say something in that moment it's just like I knew uh, I couldn't I couldn't leave it I couldn't leave someone like that and so I drove all the way to Centurion got the cables and I drove back to Brooklyn Mall, <laughs> and I'm like, I hope he's still there. I hope I didn't miss it. Uh, I was angry at myself because now I had to go all the way back. Um, and uh, I approached him. The guy was there, and he was sitting. I told him, "Listen, can I quickly talk to you? I, I just, I just feel, I just want to tell you something." I think he was a bit shocked. Um, and uh, so I took him to the one side, and I told him, "Listen." Earlier, when I walked past you, I just felt something in my heart. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus, and I really, um, I really just feel there's something that I need to tell you. I, I don't know what it is, and he just started crying, tearing up, and stuff. And he said he, he couldn't believe that 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 would happen. That someone would randomly walk by and God would show them something. Um, and he started sharing that he was addicted to drugs. Um, and his employer didn't know that his mother and father knew it, but he was on and off. So he's a heroin addict. So on and off, he 
uh, uses drugs. And so I just, I just started talking to him and I told him about the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness that we are in. Um, and, but they, and I told him that there's a spiritual connection. I, I'm not going to get into what I told him. Um, but at the end of the time, he said that he, he did give his life to Jesus. Um, and I, because I asked him, did he give, and I, I prayed for him. Um, and I gave him a reference to a video that I know that shares the gospel of, of a, dr- a former drug addict that I could, that he could go and watch. And, um, he was so grateful. Um, so I took his uh, number and the uh, last night, so I messaged him, I sent him the video link and he messaged me back 10 o'clock last night. He said, listen, I'm going to watch that video. Um, and, uh, he's going to, he's going to, I told him, listen, Let's, let's, um, spend time together. Tell me when you fall into temptation or something like that so that I can, you know, hold you accountable. So I've never done that <laughs> with a drug addict, uh, believe me. Um, but I, I, I just know that, that, that God wanted to speak to that guy. If, if I missed him, because the, I'm just gonna quickly say this as well. We, we were in a church where the one guy was also a drug addict. He left his, he left the drugs and then, um, he couldn't cope with life anymore. He took his own life. And I just felt the urgency, um, with this guy. Um, that the other guy was about 25 years old, took his, took his life. Uh, he had his whole life in front of him. He was such a talented guy. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> that it's, it just touches my heart. God gives life, and um, it's precious. It's just one life, and if you waste it, you lose it forever. It's not just you don't lose a day or so; you, you lose it forever. So, yeah, sorry for me being getting emotional, but I know it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so I, I don't, I just have this urgency in me that we can't waste time. Um, it feels, and I'm going to say this in love, that we have to get past our barriers. And I'm saying this to myself as well because yesterday I had to work with myself. If I didn't, that guy would have still maybe used another crack of heroin. Maybe he's still using it, but I know God will. There's a seed, and I'm going to show you how it works later on in, a, in another testimony. How just a seed can change someone's life. So I'll, I'll tell you, show you that. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly go to. Um, I didn't get the verses of that, but go to Matthew 13, Matthew 16, verse 13. Um, and this is. This is actually a little bit funny, uh, but it's also very relevant to us today. So it's Matthew 16, verse 13. And um, Jesus is here with the disciples, and um, I'm going to read here. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed on, um, in heaven. Um, and then he strictly charged the disciples not to tell anyone he is the Christ. So my question here um, is, who is Jesus to you? 
that's I think that's the the core. Let's start before we get into uh, ministering Jesus to anyone. Is this let's just stop for a moment and say, who is Jesus to us? Have have we really come to a place uh, and saying, listen, Jesus? You are the son of the living God. You are the king of kings. You are the king of my life. I want to follow you with all that I am. I, would, I, don't, I want to take up my cross and follow you. Um, the next part of that is also, do we know Jesus? Do we know what he's like? Have, have we not only read the Gospels, but have we had fellowship and time with him? Because if we start with that point, then the rest is, is easier. Okay. And then uh, I just want to go to the next part of that chapter. Um, and it's also uh, Matthew 16. Um, and uh, Matthew 16, verse 21. And this, uh, Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. So from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples what he must go that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Imagine that. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe sometimes I would have done the same thing. You know, It's like, how can you say this, Jesus? How can you? And listen what Jesus says. Um, so uh, Peter says uh, first, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Um, and but Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Okay. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. I think it's super important. So I just want to go back to this slide here. Yeah. I think it's super important to keep our minds on God. Um, what is what is our mind set on? And I'm I'm, I'm going to touch on a few points this morning. I'm going to tie it back, so you can we can all bring it back together. But do we keep our faith in Jesus, uh, or do we keep our faith on what the president says, or what uh, the disasters in another country says, or what the news says, or what my Mother-in-law says, there's my mother-in-law joke. <laughs> what, why do we keep our minds on? Because the, the gospel is a gospel of peace. And if we set our minds on fear and unbelief, and we watch the news and uh, how big the lottery is, and um, there's so many examples. Uh, the recession coming now, uh, LBGT, we, we actually talked about the LGBTQ uh, movement. Um, if we set our minds on things like that, how can we share the gospel? How, how can we become like Christ? And um, there is some verses in that uh, that I just want to quickly read to you. Um, so there's a lot of word in here. So Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 25. You can just turn to me, with me to that chapter. It says here, Now I say this, now I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous, and they have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each, of, uh, each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, neighbor, for we are members of one another. 
then Romans 12 verse 2. Sorry, that, that verse is almost self-explanatory. I don't even have to add something to that. I just want to go on to the, the next chapter. So Romans 12 verse 2, and I think lots of us know this verse. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By testing, you may know what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. For, and then the last one in Proverbs, and this is out of the King James Version. Um, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And the rest of the verse says, Eat and drink, saith to he, but his heart is not with thee. I think the first step into walking uh, uh, a godly life and to start sharing the gospel is taking our minds off what the world says because we're taking our faith and our belief to that to that thing if someone says you you're gonna get sick in a week and you start pondering on that you're gonna you're gonna get sick in a week but if so, someone says you're gonna you're gonna live you're not gonna die or you're gonna live you um, you're not gonna get sick and you start believing that it will happen. We have to renew our minds. So, yeah, I want to actually uh, just share the first, the first testimony, and this is really dear to me. I might get teared up, so sorry, I'll just turn away and cry that side, and then I'll come back. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so uh, my daughter is not here this morning. Her name is Esme. Uh, it means beloved. A very, very lovely beautiful daughter. She's at the grandparents, but uh, my wife just wanted to listen in on the message this morning, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so her school, a nursery, um, the principal of the nursery's name is Lilith. I'm just going to give her, I don't think anyone of you know her, so, um, uh, but her mother's name was Esme, uh, and my daughter's name is Esme. And uh, her mother died, I'm not sure how long ago, so maybe a few years ago. But ever, uh, ever since then, she's never heard the name Esme after that, called Esme. And when my daughter came into the school, Esme, she immediately just felt like a connection, uh, because it's the same name as her mother. Um, and I want to show you how God works, uh, because this is very special. Um, and so she just knew something was up. Um, and she didn't really like Christians. So she, yeah, she just, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I don't always like Christians as well. <laughs> I'm a Christian as well, but sometimes we, uh, yeah, uh, the, the way we handle stuff. Um, but so my mother started you know, spending time with her because my mother loves gardening. So my mother started, you know, make, making the, uh, making up the gardens and she helped with painting, I think. Yeah. She helped with painting and stuff in the school. It's a small school. Um, and so she just felt that mother love from my, from my mom. And, uh, my mom just shared a little bit of Jesus with her and so on, but she never really talked about that and uh, so the one morning um, I went uh, to drop off Esme at school and uh, it's also one of those mornings where you just want to go but God says no, it's time and uh, I, I'm not sure if it was my mother who told me but I can't remember the exact detail but I asked her if I could pray for her uh, and she said yeah I could pray for her back she had trouble with her back and so I prayed for her and immediately something happened in her back. There was like a healing taking place in her back. And uh, so a few, I think a few months went by. Um, and one morning or one day she was standing in front of the mirror brushing her teeth or she was busy in the bathroom there in front of the mirror. And she, she heard a voice say, Lilith. Uh, and it was Jesus. And Jesus spoke to her. Um, <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so Jesus spoke to her. Um, and she, the best part for me is she, she recognized his voice. She was, she's not a believer, but she recognized Jesus' voice. 
Um, and I just want to quickly read this before I go on with the testimony. It says, <clears throat> but now, and this is in Isaiah 43, it says, but now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. And it was just so special to me that God, Jesus, went to a, we didn't, I mean, I, we didn't share the gospel again after praying for her, but Jesus came himself and he spoke to her, she recognized his voice, and she gave her life to Jesus, just like that. And um, that's just the first part of the testimony, so it's, it gets better. Um, so now she's healed. She um, she she uh, gives her life to Jesus, and um, a few weeks or months later, um, so we hear this testimony, and Stefan and I tear up together <laughs> uh, because she told my mother first, and um, a few months later, she she couldn't sleep that that specific night, and uh, son could also not sleep. It was I don't know what time it was. And so the, she's, she made coffee for them and so they sat, sat on the couch and they were talking. And he's like, Mom, did you um, download this Bible app on my phone? And she's like, no, I didn't. I didn't do that. And she really didn't do it. Um, and so what happened is there's a Bible app on his phone and he started reading it and he gave his life to Jesus as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If that does, doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. But <clears throat> that's just a seed. I mean, my mother talked about Jesus. I prayed a little bit. And Jesus came himself and ministered to her. He spoke to her and said, Lilith, and she gave her life. Obviously, when Jesus comes himself, you can't. <laughs> it's just like, okay, <laughs> here's my life. What else do you want? Um, but that, that's just beautiful because Jesus is working in her whole family's life. Um, uh, her husband, after she's got saved, uh, in 24 hours he's got, he had an interview and he got a job, a quite well-paid job, I think. Uh, they could buy a car for themselves. And there's just testimony upon testimony coming in from them. And it, was, it wasn't us. It was a little bit of obedience. But we didn't even share the gospel. Five minutes. Oh my soul. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I can't believe the time goes by that fast. Okay. But yeah, so that was, um, that was just incredible to me. I want to share another testimony because, um, yeah, that's, that's, I just want to make you hungry this morning. I just want to see what else I wanted to say. Yeah. Oh, and the last part of this uh, is that my wife um, had the opportunity this one morning to sit with her and, and uh, spend time and uh, drink coffee. And she's just asking questions about the Word and, and about Jesus. And uh, Stefania has the opportunity, my wife has the opportunity to minister to her and disciple her. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, to me, it's just a beautiful example of how Jesus wants us to go and make disciples, but sometimes he uses a process uh, and it looks different for everyone. Okay, so yeah, um, so five minutes really baffled me. I thought half an hour was longer. <laughs> um, I, I really believe in my heart that God wants to use every one of us. Um, God has given us the Holy Spirit, He has sent us the Holy Spirit, the teacher and our guide, to go out and minister to people. It uh, doesn't matter if you're shy, it doesn't matter if you're extrovert, it doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter what language you speak. God wants to work through you. It doesn't matter how much money you have or influence. God can use you. And I want to really, really encourage you this morning to step out uh, try to go out and speak to one person in a week or in a month uh, and try to, uh, to, to just uh, lead them to Jesus. Um, the Holy Spirit works differently for everyone. 
Uh, so you just have to follow his guidance. If you go out, um, sometimes a person will look at you and uh, you're like, am I saying the right thing now? Um, sometimes it's just a simple word. Sometimes it's very specific. Sometimes you just have to share the gospel and say, Jesus gave his life. The King of Kings gave his life. He came down to earth, became a man, and he died for us, for our sins, so that we can be one with him, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes just something as simple as that. People, some people I've asked, do you know Jesus? They have never heard of the name Jesus. In South Africa, around us, that's, that's how relevant is, uh, that, that is. Some, I'm not sure if they're lying, but I mean that, uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I mean, I can't even fathom that someone hasn't heard about Jesus. So people need Jesus and we need to go and minister him to people. Okay. So it's first starts with knowing Jesus. It starts with renewing your mind and having faith in him, giving your life completely to him so that he can minister through you. Okay. Because if we sit with things in our mind as negative, we're not going to clearly hear what where he wants to send us, okay? And then I just want to end off with this testimony. Uh, do I have three, two minutes? Can I do this? Okay, quickly. So we went to eat out at a, um, at a rose farm. It's called Ludwig's Roses. I always have the name wrong. Um, and my daughter played there today. And this one lady, uh, she was, she was our waiter. She, um, when we finished eating, we paid the bill. And I asked her, can I pray for you, uh, for, for healing or for whatever you, can I just pray for you? And that is always a nice, uh, because people want prayer. Some people don't like it, but I can guarantee you, the strike rate is 90%, for 95%. People ask prayer. Um, and so we prayed, um, together around the table for her. And while we were praying, a stomach swelling would just go, went poof, down. Um, and she was completely healed. And she was so amazed after we prayed and she wanted to bow down. I told her, listen, <laughs> please don't bow down. Um, and I told her, listen, uh, what, who do you believe in? And, uh, she says, no, she's a Roman Catholic. And, uh, I said, listen, Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And, uh, he wants, uh, he wants to be part of your life. You want to give your life to Jesus. And she gave her life to Jesus. And uh, it was just powerful because after that she went and called the other ladies for, to uh, bring them with so that we can pray for them too for healing because some of them had a food thing. And a, But God will even multiply the gospel through you. And I mean, you can start with praying for someone for healing. You can start with just giving an encouraging word and you just touch that person's heart. The Holy Spirit will use that seed to go into that person's heart and make it grow. So, yeah, I think I'm, my, yeah, the time is already gone. But, yeah, God bless you. I really hope I made you hungry for the gospel. I actually didn't even get hold, about half of what I wanted to say. But I encourage you and I urge you, Jesus is coming. These people need to hear about Jesus. These people dying. These people, yeah, missing the point completely. Even Christians missing the point. We need to tell people about Jesus and we need to disciple them. It's, it's, it's more important than ever. Time is coming very soon. Now, God bless you. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Can I pray for us? Yeah. Can I ask you to stand together? I, I, if you can just hold out your hands, um, I just want to pray this over you. Holy Spirit, you are here with us. Thank you that Jesus has done everything for us so that we can live a life with abundance in you, Lord. Thank you that you've given us a life full of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are not God with us, but you are God in us and work through us 
So I come in this morning, I pray for this congregation. I pray that it will be a congregation not only that reads the Bible, but teaches the Bible and preaches the Word. Father, that it will be an active Word, just as you say in Roman, in Hebrews 12, Father. For full, Father, for the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, when we speak the Word, Father, something changes. So I just come and pray that everyone here will, will just have a, I just pray for a hunger, Father, for your word and for preaching the gospel. Father, it doesn't matter what it looks like, but as long as it's with you and following you, Holy Spirit, I pray for your guidance and show us where we should go, what we should say and see, Father, the miraculous happen. I pray for you. People in this congregation that prays for people that gets healed, Father. People that get set free. And people that lives are transformed completely by you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for just giving us the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen.